<laughs> All right, thanks, John. Um, I don't know how many of you can see it, but this URL at the top of the web page I'm showing is probably the, the key bookmark one to know. For those of you who have already signed up on the listserv, and we do have lots of members, I'll be sending out an email shortly after this meeting just to um, remind everyone of the URL. It is a closed URL, uh, meaning that you can't just you know, play, surf around our site and eventually land on it. Um, because this is very experimental, we're not quite ready for the public to see it, and we're still trying to build this beta-wise. Um, I mentioned the listserv. Uh, this uh, icon on the far left is a new feature that we've added. So if you are a member of the listserv, you can go to this, and I'll enter my information shortly. If you're not, and you decide you want to do this, just drop me an email, say that you're interested in being on uh, the listserv, and we'll get you part of the group. So let me log in here. I usually do a typo when I'm doing my own name. So let's see. Uh, the nice thing here is you can, this is currently 155 members. You can, if you're into seeing lots of names at once, <laughs> you can scroll through and see who all's on. Um, for me, I can't grasp that much information at once. So you can pick your favorite state. Uh, these are all the states that we have participating members of the uh, listserv currently. And then if you hit go, then this is a quick view. Now, I understand that many of the offices uh, carry over different states. So obviously, you can look at the different states there. So these are all the people in Iowa. So we, you can see the type. We have the weather service employees that have already signed up for the listserv. We have what we think are extension folks, uh, where possible phone numbers, uh, roles. If you see any typos, by all means, let me know. But one of the objectives of this is um, so that each other now knows perhaps who to contact. Because if an ag specialist sees that there could be an impending problem, they now have a better idea who to talk to, or weather service employees can see who has volunteered in their state. Uh, unfortunately, with the Ag Extension, we don't know what regions they cover, but they should be a good starting point to contact, because that was, in my opinion, one of the objectives of this group that started last fall was to try and improve communication not only between the Weather Service offices, but between the Weather Service offices and the um, plant community, so to say, whether that be Extension or Master Gardeners or whomever. Uh, we have broken up at this point our products into the fall freeze map. So those of you who are part of that listserv got to see this. Um, I'll show you the spring freeze next. And then the GIS is, to me, the flashy cool one. But let's start with the basic one of the spring freeze map. As I said, this is operational, sort of. <laughs> Working out some kinks here. So as of a couple mornings ago, unfortunately, the map's not too pretty because we're still pretty early. Or early in the spring, late in the winter, depending upon where you want to go with this. But from the pull-down list, and I think that was the default one, so that's not going to show us much. Days since the last hard freeze, obviously our southern states get a little bit more colorful in here. Uh, let's see. And some of these we just kind of came up with on the fly. If these don't make sense to any of you or if you'd like to see new categories added, we're certainly happy to do that. Number of days in the last two weeks that have been above a hard freeze, because we figure if there's been a lot of days in the last couple weeks, we might start seeing plant growth. Um, and again, these products are for everybody, from the forecasters to ag specialists, anyone who wants to be on this listserv, so to say, or have access to the URL. Um, if we had, say, six days in the past two weeks that were above freezing, maybe it's more about consecutive days in that period that was above freezing. So just here's another product to kind of get an idea, well, was it four or five days in a row, six days in a row? Um, and I'm sure I'm screwing up titles, so it's probably important to read these titles <laughs> above all of this. We have various growing degree day products. Um, we will be offering more flexibility with this in the future, but you'll see that in the GIS tools. So using a base 50, how many growing degree days have we accumulated? Again, sorry for the boringness of these maps, but we're just kind of been too cold lately. And then we added a new experimental one of uh, accumulating growing degree days, maybe not since the February 1st start date, but since the most recent 28 degree freeze or hard freeze. 
because uh, we were wondering if this would change things. If we had a hard enough freeze, would that kind of harm the plants enough so you almost have to reset? We don't have a lot of scientific basis on this. Like I said, it's experimental. Some folks like the shading in between the points. Others are concerned that uh, we're making too many assumptions with that. So if you're somebody who doesn't care to have things interpolated and want to just see what the points are doing, you can select the point only option. Uh, another thing that's kind of nice is this is a zoomed out view. And I know you guys aren't doing any particular forecast for one region. I'm going to pick on Arkansas. I, I'm assuming at least I was going to pick on Arkansas. I'll pick on Missouri. <laughs> um, you can click on the state, and that will get you a more zoomed in look at what's going on with the color stations. We've added the CWA outlines in there, so you can get a feel for what's going on. Um, I think that covers everything I wanted to do for these. OK. Oh, no, there was one more thing I wanted to show, as you probably saw in the pull down, that I didn't get to. Actually, a couple things. Those climatology products that we've offered for several years now on our public uh, Climate Watch site, Climate Watch site, we now offer here, so you don't have to jump in between um, URLs or locations. You can get the climatology as well from this site. So you can get the earliest date of a hard freeze, latest date of a hard freeze, of just a normal freeze. Uh, again, I think you can do, do you want to just see points only on these sorts of things? Or do you like the contour maps of those? And then the last grouping that we have here is about input from all of you who are interested in participating, not only from the Weather Service. So we have Weather Service input on maybe what the status is of the season freeze, the spring freeze. But we have a separate page that will be set aside for anyone who's not weather service. So this would be the agriculture, horticulture, nursery, home gardener um, experts who are on the list that want to give their input. At the moment, we just have these four crude categories. We're open again if you guys don't like this or have other suggestions. So no data, meaning we haven't gotten anything from everybody. We're kind of preliminary. We haven't even started thinking about whether we need to issue headlines because we just so darn cold all the time. Um, maybe we can default this to it's just not needed. We, we're still in the heart of winter, and, and we don't feel that there's a need. Um, there's a possible need, depending upon are we talking maybe home gardeners versus agriculture. So that possible would kind of alert us that maybe for some sectors it's not that important. And then this final one of it is encouraged. So we're hoping that the non-weather service people, so I'm just going to call them ag experts at this point, are going to be very involved with essentially shading by county areas by these three codes. And again, if people don't like these um, code shading contacts, labels, and so forth, we are certainly open to changing it. We're just throwing something out in the meantime. Uh, for the GIS products, I'm always excited when that loads. Uh, let's see, we start off. I got to scroll down here. Well, I'm just going to zoom in here to get to some point. Zoom in far enough, you can start seeing your uh, station points that were similar. It's not the same as the points on those static maps I just showed you. Some nice things with this is you can actually mouse over the point and quickly get a summary of all the categories um, so you don't have to kind of click and scroll between uh, the different group or categories of maps. You can just go to your favorite station that you're concerned about and see what the summary is. Uh, we got feedback from Indianapolis last fall on this because they were just seeing the static maps before, and there were some suspicious bullseye stations that had a very different color than any of the other colors. And, but they couldn't really tell which station it was to alert us to say, hey, could there be a problem with this site? So another kind of secondary objective to this is if you do see suspicious coloring or data from a station, you can mouse over and quickly see what site that is in addition to getting information about it. We have this select by extent tool. So let's say you're in the Chicago area and you really want to know stuff about all of these up in the blue box, you can toggle through these. So you don't maybe have to click one at a time. 
You can quickly go through the different stations as you click. It highlights which of those stations you're on. And so that's a nice way to maybe get a quick peek at a group of stations all at one time. We have uh, the products on this GIS map in the three different groupings. One is the show stations, which we're looking at now. We have a legend option so that you can take that legend, move it off to the side if you want, but get an idea of what's going on. I'm going to try and move to a more interesting, colorful location, <laughs> I thought. Oh, there you start to get some colors. Um, days within the two, you see the legend went away so because we want to do new products, so we didn't want people to confuse legends. Uh, here we do have a little bit more control over growing degree days because folks have come back and said they like the 42 base, others like 45, 50, and so forth. So you can control that, but you can also control what your date is for that growing degree day. Obviously, this list isn't very long yet because we haven't even hit March 1st, but as we approach those dates, then this list will go longer. If people want to start modifying, well, they don't want to have it start accumulating on this date, but another date. And as we're trying experimentally, you can even just do from the last hard freeze. There's the shading option for those of you that you know really want to have an interpolation. What's really kind of neat about this is your shading. Again, you have a legend that you can open up and see what the shading means. But you can shade on one parameter, but then do points on another. So these points are actually color-coded. And I can pull up that legend as well. So the points are going to be color-coded based on the growing degree days, which is what I have selected at the moment. But the shading will be based on another parameter. And you can mix and match these all over the place if you want to try and overlay these concepts to get a better idea of the vulnerability of the plant. And then the final one which, again, is empty because we really don't have anything yet, and I'll go through where we're going with this idea, is the shaded county concept based off of weather service input and then the non-weather service input. So we're working on developing an input form so folks can go into that form and they can say, well, this is I want to submit a guidance report of what I think is going on in the area or what I'm leaning towards doing. And then in this GIS world, in the previous maps that I showed, they were static. So you would just see county shaded but without any information. Once we get this activated, you should be able to click on a county, theoretically, and open up whatever that input box was. So if it was input from a non-weather service person, you want to see what they said, you could open it up, and there'll be text boxes in the forms. So you can read through the logic. You can read through the date that they posted that. Um, so we hope that this will be a nice way that folks will be able to communicate with each other without having to spamming the full listserv or get on the phone if you're a little phone ab ab adversive. Uh, one of these. All right, so this is a very draft form. You have to promise not to tell anybody about this, wink, wink, because we're still in the development stage. Again, people can only sub um, submit a report or a guidance form uh, if you're a subscriber. So if you want to be included in this, then you just need to send me an email and subscribe. What I'm about to enter, though, is an option to do two things. This form is going to solve, uh, not solve, but try and handle two different issues. One is if you want to submit a report on, in terms of guidance. Should we or should we not issue a headline? What is the concern out there? Again, we're going to hopefully get input from the ag experts in addition to weather service offices. And then the report can also be used to submit uh, freeze impacts after an event, which would be very useful to get an idea for either media or for just science to be able to see spatially across the region what was the impact from the most recent report. So we're probably going to have a choice of, so this one is, like I said, it's still in the development stage. Um, you can then select at the very beginning, or do you want to do a guidance report at this point, or do you want to submit a report on freeze impacts around your area? For weather service, you're probably going to want to select which counties you want to make a comment on by county warning area, but we understand ag experts don't understand county warning areas, so they can either do it by state, or they could even select regions by their crop reporting area. Again, just as an example, we have a couple CWAs in here. 
that will pull up a map because if you're like me, you haven't memorized every single county in your area. You can either check all the counties for your county warning area or you can go through and say, well, this doesn't quite apply to those. And with the map, you can actually see, did I catch all those that I want? You then pick which category you feel is important, like you just don't think that there's any growth out there, so you don't think there's any need to have an advisory because we all just realize it's, it's cold in winter. You can then type in whatever you want in this area. Then ideally, just so we have some tracking information, you can pick who you're with. Maybe you're with the National Weather Service. And then you can fill out your contact information because, as again, with the GIS, if somebody clicks on a county and pulls up this report, they might want to know who did it so they can follow up and say, oh, you know, I, I disagree or I think you're the smartest person in the world. Uh, then obviously at some point this would be submitted. So there's a little bit more work to do with this, but that's to give everybody an idea of where we're going with the form input concept. So going back to the main page, that was um, everything that I was thinking of mentioning. Mike, did I forget anything? I don't think so. All right. So are there any questions that people have? Hopefully I wasn't on mute that whole time. Oh, thank you, Beth. I think that's some really great information. Uh, also, I wanted to, you said right under there you have the NRCS National Water Climate Center PRISM climate data server. So that, that's... Oh. Oh, that, that, but that yeah. may not be complete. Is that complete yet? Or I know they're doing some new stuff with the PRISM data. Yeah, actually, um, when the listserv started, I got an email from the state climatologist of Wyoming. Tony Bergatano, I think, mm -hmm. um, and he wanted to let me know of this resource out there that people might find useful to getting more information as well. I don't want to walk through it because I haven't looked at it in a while, but we thought it would be a good idea then if anybody has products that they find useful that we can just add that. I mean, it just happens we only have one in our list right now. That's this PRISM one. But if people come on and say, you know, I also like this tool out there, that tool out there, well, then we're happy to add all of these so that people are going to kind of one location. 